All right, uh, in the next part of the lecture, we are going to see how we can uh, do optimization with constraints. So first, let us look at uh, problems where we have just one constraint. So here are a few examples. Find the shortest distance from the point one, two to the curve x, y equals four, right? Uh, so the shortest distance from the point 1.2. It means that the um, shortest means that we should minimize distance is the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared. So this is the distance from a point x, y uh, to the point 1, 2. So we should find shortest means minimize subject uh, to the constraint x, y equals 1. Now, in part B, the temperature on a hot plate, so this is our function, hottest spot means that the temperature should be maximized. On the ellipse, so this is our constraint, so subject to this condition. Okay, now let, let us look at part C. So what is the least surface area of a closed right circular cylinder uh, whose volume is, is the given, um, given number? Right, uh, so here we have a cylinder. So let me, I don't know, maybe let me erase this. Uh, let me um, draw a cylinder and write its uh, surface area and its volume. So if we have a cylinder uh, of height IH and radius R, then its area, surface area, what is it? So surface area contains of top and bottom, so they're both of them are circles. So the surf, the area of the top is pi r square. So the area of the bottom is the same, so two pi r square plus uh, the side face is what is the length of the circle times h, right? So it is two pi r h. So this is the surface area. It should be least surface area, so it should be minimized. Subject to the constraint. The volume is 18 pi, so subject to the constraint. And the volume is, is what is uh, top or bottom area times the height. So it's pi r squared times h. So this is the volume. It should be equal to 18 pi. All right, so in any case, uh, we are minimizing or maximizing uh, the value of some function subject to a certain constraint. Now, let us look at the method of Lagrange multipliers of finding possible candidates uh, subject to just one equality constraint of the form g of x, y equals k, right? So it means that basically uh, you can think of, uh, of, of the, this as finding the global minimum or the global maximum on a function with a modified domain. So instead of just like the natural domain where we include all values of x and y, we just restrict ourselves to um, to only those points x, y that satisfy the given constraint. Now, well, strictly speaking, it should be called the method of Lagrange multiplier as in singular because there is just one Lagrange multiplier if that there is just one constraint. So the number of Lagrange multipliers is the same as the number of constraints. So every Lagrange multiplier uh, corresponds to, to, to one constraint, right? Um, uh, now, let me emphasize that it, it's not always even obvious that, uh, you know, the minimum or the maximum exists, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, well, you shouldn't worry too much, I and mean, at least in, in your exam, uh, you know, that there is, if it is not obvious, then, you know, it, it's going to be just sort of um, given in, in the question that you may assume that the minimum exists or the maximum exists, right? So, but hypothetically, if we know that, well, the global max, say global maximum exists and the global minimum exists, then in order to uh, to find it, we just kind of determine all kind of um, suspects or candidates for such a global maximum from the method of Lagrange multipliers. And then we just directly substitute them into the function and, and see the uh, at which point the function's value is, is the largest or the, the smallest if we are looking for the minimum. 
All right, uh, so here is the method of Lagrange multipliers. Well, again, so strictly speaking, it is, should be just one multiplier because the, the, this number lambda here is, is, is what is called Lagrange multiplier. Multiplier. So just, just one multiplier. So <laughs> there are two or more multipliers, you know, if, if, if there are two or more constraints. Right, so uh, what, what we do here is we take the gradient of our function f, take the gradient of uh, the constraint g, and we write the, the, the this equation that the gradient of f is proportional to the gradient of, of g. So which means that the gradient of f is sometimes some, some number lambda times the gradient of, of g. And th th this lambda is our Lagrange multiplier. And it becomes one of, of the unknowns. Okay, and then we find all possible candidates and we just evaluate f at all the, the, the these, these points. And, uh, well, basically, um, we compare the value of uh, f at, at, at those points. Okay, so um, these two remarks are not really important for the method of, I mean, for, for computing according to the method of Lagrange multipliers. So it, it, it's probably more just to kind of to, to understand why why it works, right? So uh, basically, if we know that nabla f is uh, lambda times nabla g, um, I mean generally speaking, if one of the vectors is some constant times the other vector, then it means that the, the, these two vectors are, are, are proportional, uh, well, are parallel. So if if this is say nabla f then maybe the, the, this could be nabla g or maybe exactly the opposite the, this could be nabla g um so here is a diagram uh, that kind of um shows shows you the intuition behind the method of lagrange multiplier right so so here we want to to find the maximum value of some function f right now um if say if you look at some, some point here right so at, at, at this point, uh, the value of f is not the maximum, right? So what is nabla f? Is the gradient of f. And the gradient of f is perpendicular to level curves of f, right? So the gradient of f uh, points somewhere in this direction. At the same time, the gradient of f uh, shows the direction in which f increases most rapidly, right? And if this direction is not perpendicular to to our um, level curve of the function g on, on which we are restricted. Then basically by kind of moving in, in this direction, so if you kind of move the, the point a, a little bit here, you will increase the value of f, right? So which means that at that point, f is not at its maximum. But if you look at this point instead, so here, uh, Nabla f is, uh, again, it's the gradient of f. It is perpendicular to um, the level curves of f. And at the same point here, it is parallel to nabla g, which means it is also perpendicular to, to the level curve of, of g, which is our constraint. So here, nabla f is parallel to nabla g, right? But then what it really means is that uh, you know, in order to increase the value of our function, we, we should go in, in the direction uh, that is, you know, uh, perpendicular to, to our constraint, to our level curve. But, um, I mean, we, we can't really move along the curve in the direction perpendicular to the curve itself. So, which is why... While we are at that point, we, we can't really increase the, the value of the, of the function. Okay, so that's kind of the intuition here behind the method of Lagrange multipliers. Uh, but let, let me explain how we can apply it. Uh, so how, how we can use it to solve uh, numeric problems. Uh, so this is the example that you already saw in the first part in, in today's lecture. So only in the first part, we kind of just applied common sense to, to derive the, the answer. All right, uh, so here is the diagram with level curves. So I hope it helps. I mean, you you, you, you can stare at it. So, so notice that 
at, at, at this point and at this point uh, the level curves of our objective function are they, they have the, the same tangent line uh, as uh, the level surface that uh, define that, that, that defines our constraint All right so the, the this line is is, is the uh, what is it sorry on the circle x square plus y square yeah I, I believe that this this line I guess the the picture is a little bit distorted so this is actually circle x square plus y square is one okay um So um, the, the first thing to do is to, to understand that uh, in, in this case, both minimum and maximum exist, right? So both minimum and maximum exist. So why is, is it true? Is because um, our constraint x square plus y square is one is a circle. So it is the, the set, the underlying set here, the, the circle is closed and bounded. Right, uh, and since it is closed and bounded, it means that we can apply the method of Lagrange multiplier. Well, okay, so, so singular here, so it is correct. And so there is just one Lagrange multiplier, lambda, uh, to 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 find uh, the both the minimum and, and the maximum. All right, so how do we do that? So to do that, we've got to find our um, so let me, let me move here. Um, we need to find the derivative of f with respect to x. So uh, this is 2x. The derivative of f with respect to y, which is 4y. The derivative of g with respect to x, it is uh, 2x. The derivative of g with respect to y, it is 2y. And then I'm, I'm going to write uh, three equations here. So because there is just uh, there are two variables, and one constraint. So the number of equations is three. So each variable gives you one equation and each constraint gives you uh, also one equation. So the first two equations tell us that uh, nebula F is proportional to nebula, uh, nebula G, right? So 2x equal to lambda times uh, two, two x, right? So what I do here, I take the derivative of f with respect to x, the derivative of g with respect to x, they happen to be the same. And then I, I, I write that fx is lambda times gx. So the second uh, equation is comes from the second derivative, well, the, the, the other two, two derivatives. So fy. So 4y equals lambda times 2y. And the third constraint, the, the third equation is, is just our constraint is x square plus y square is 1. And then we need to solve this system of equations. Well, first, let me just, um, I don't know, cancel a little bit and move everything to the left-hand side. So in the first equation, 2 cancels out, and then I'm going to move uh, lambda x to the left-hand side. So the, the first equation is x minus lambda x is 0. The third equation, so the second equation, so we have 2 here, so I'm going to, to, to cancel by 2. So it is 2y minus lambda y is 0. And the third equation is just x squared plus y squared is 1. OK, so in the first equation, I can factor out x. So, so the first equation is x times 1 minus lambda is 0. Uh, the second equation is, is y times 2 minus lambda is 0. And the third equation is still x squared plus y squared is one right so now i have a system of simultaneous equations that i need to solve it is non-linear but it's kind of fairly um straightforward to, to solve right so let, let me look at the first equation first so x times one minus lambda is zero so th this is the product of two factors and the product of two factors is zero which means that either uh, x is zero or one minus lambda is zero right so it's going to be something like case one is x is zero and case two is one minus a lambda is zero. So this is going to be like case one, and this is case two. 
So let me do case one. So if x is zero, so if x is zero, regardless of the value of lambda, then I am going to substitute it to the third equation, right? So here, I'm going to write that x is, is zero in, in the third equation. So then in the third equation, I get zero square plus y square is one. So essentially y square is one, is one. So y is plus minus one. Okay, in the, now when I substitute this into the second equation, y is plus minus one. Then I'm going to get, okay, um, basically it means that two minus lambda, two minus lambda is zero. So lambda is two. Now, strictly speaking, the value of lambda doesn't really matter because we are only interested in x and y, but it, it is kind of good to, to check because if uh, the second equation were impossible to resolve, then we wouldn't have uh, a solution here, right? So. So in this case, x is zero and y is plus minus one. So we have two answers, zero, negative one, and zero, one. Okay, so the third, so sorry, the, the second case is one minus lambda is zero. So lambda is one. Okay, now lambda does not appear in the third equation, but lambda does appear in the second equation, right? So let us substitute, uh, a lambda equal to one into the uh, second equation. So here lambda is one. So two minus lambda is, is two minus one is, is one. So y is has to be zero from the second equation. So y has to be zero. So let us substitute y equals zero to the third equation. So when y is zero in the third equation, so essentially x square is, is one and x is plus minus one. Right, so all the three equations are satisfied now. And again, so we don't really care about the value of lambda. What is important is the value of x and y. And we have two, two answers. So we have x is, can be either negative one and then y is zero or x is positive one and then y, y is zero. And that, that's it. So that there is no more uh, solution here. So we have four candidates for the point of uh, minimum and, and maximum. So, which means that some of them are our minima, some of them are our maxima. So we just need to find f of zero, negative one. f of zero, negative one is going to be what? Um, um, is two, I guess, yeah, it's two. Um, f of 0, 1 is, is also 2. So f of negative 1, 0. So now x is negative 1, y is 0, so it's going to be 1, and f of 1, 0 is, is also 1. So which, which means that the, these two points, 0 and, neg 0 and plus minus 1, are our local maxima. And um, plus minus 1 and 0 are our local minima. Okay, so th this is how the method of Lagrange multipliers works. Okay, so again, so one more time. So we set up the, the these equations, we solve them, um, find two candidate points. So zero, one, well, sorry, in total it's, it's, it's four. So here there are two of them and there are two more. Um, so the, the printed version has kind of more details. Um, but then basically we, we just compare um, the, the values and we find the, the answer. Okay, so th this is how, um, th th this is what we do if we have one objective function and one equality constraint. So what do we do if we have one objective function and one inequality constraint? Well, but again, so the inequality constraint should be non-sharp. Well, notice that uh, uh, this constraint, inequality constraint means that either x square plus y, y square is less than one or 
x square plus y square is precisely the one. Um, so what you you can do, I mean, so what we have here is is a disk, right? So x square plus y square is less than or equal to one. Um, now this disk essentially consists of what whatever is inside the disk this part and whatever is on the circle did this part so it, it has the in, inside of the disk and it has the, the circle and by combining the, the, the two we get the, the the whole disk with with the circle right so in order to find uh, points of minimum or maximum candidate points of minimum and maximum. On the circle, we apply the method of Lagrange multiplier. On inside the the, 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 the disk, we just uh, apply uh, the unconstrained optimization that, that we are already familiar with, right? So what we do is basically for this part, we apply unconstrained optimization on optimization and for this part we do the, our lambda Lagrange multipliers. Unconstrained optimization means kind of sim simply write that fx is zero and fy is zero. Okay, so let, let's do that. So the, this part is, is already done. So here we found four candidate points which are plus minus one zero and zero plus minus one. Okay, so anyway so the disk is close and bounded, so which is why the minimum and the maximum exist. And uh, in order to um, to do it, right? So the first step is to find all possible candidates for extreme values in the interior of the disk. So notice that here we are not required to verify whether uh, the extreme values, the candidates, that, that we are finding are really local minima or local maxima because the, the simple thing to do is just to 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 list all of them and, and just to compare so instead of applying the second derivative test right so what we can do is we can just write that fx find fx equate to zero find fy equate to zero and that'll be it so fx is 2x equate to zero fy is uh, 4y equate to zero so from here we see that x is zero y is zero so and the only solution is is, is the origin zero zero now we could apply the second derivative test to to check whether the, this is a local minimum local maximum or a saddle point but we don't really need because now we just want all possible candidates right so we just include this into the list of all possible candidates all right so at the same time, notice that uh, f of 0, 0 is, is, is 0. OK, so and we're going to find the candidates for extreme values on the boundary of this circle. right? So and this is the Lagrange multipliers method that we already um, implemented. right? So we don't really need to do, to do it anymore. So there are four candidates. And we have checked all of them. And we found the um, uh, the, the value of the function, right? So, and we found that, that what? So the value of the function is two here, two here, one here, one here. And the, there is one more point that, that we just have from from the unconstrained optimization. The possible candidate is zero, zero, and the value at that point is zero. So this is maximum, this is minimum. Very simple. So this is maximum, this is minimum. Okay, so this is how we solve um, a constraint optimization where the constraint is a non-sharp inequality, is less than or equal to. Okay, so this is the end of part four. So please do the quiz and continue with part five.